back to class. I'm happy to see you guys are still here. Haven't quit on me yet. This is day one point, uh, day three, afternoon lecture. So this morning we talked about Git. I don't wanna talk about that anymore. We're gonna talk about that more as it comes up. Right now, we're gonna talk about this little thing called Bootstrap. So far, we've been talking a lot about Flexbox. Flex here, justify there, align this, blah, 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 blah. Flexbox can only solve a small set of the problems that we have when it becomes time to develop front-end applications. It solves the problem of positioning within a uh, container. We can have big containers, small containers, etc. That's what it solves. That being said, let's recap. HTML is super easy. It doesn't take that much thinking. You're not gonna have a headache over HTML. You might miss a div and things look funky, but you're not gonna be like, how the fuck do I do that? No, you're not gonna think to yourself stuff like that. CSS is the trickier part. I haven't, we haven't made you guys do a lab where we make you guys make this work on six different screens. But no, you might be asked to do that one day. You know, it depends on what company you work at. That's the truth. Depends on the product too. Some, pro some products are anticipated to be worked on on a computer. So it might not be uh, necessary to make it mobile responsive, right? Once again, what we said, and why uh, going back to Flexbox, is that positioning is probably one of the most difficult things to get something to position correctly, right? Does everyone, you guys, you guys are with me when I say positioning, right? You understand what I'm saying? Put it on the left, put it on the right, put it in the middle, put it in the middle vertically, put it in the middle horizontally, etc. That's very difficult. Put it in the middle, and then inside that, I want something on the left, and then something on the right. Quite tricky. CSS takes a lot of time. Even though it's actually much simpler than a lot, of, a lot of other things that we're going to do, it still takes a lot of time. I hope you guys have saw that these last couple days. For those of you who went to the pre-lab or the pre-work and the, the work we did the last two days, like, yes, it was done in a day. I'll give you that one. I have been impressed by some of you guys. I think, I think you guys are going somewhere. But imagine if we asked you guys to do 100 pages. That's not gonna get fun. That's not gonna be fun. And imagine if I asked you guys to make 100 nav bars. You guys could get very bored of that very quickly. There should be an easier way to do this. And in fact, there is. But actually, real quick, the, one of the primary objectives of Bootstrap is to help you make your website responsive. Fuck. And I, I, I was gonna show you Vesera's data, their Firebase, but I got kicked out of the account. I don't work there, they don't give me access anymore. But I'm happy we found this link. This is March 12th, 2019. This is some data from 52 popular websites and mobile apps. And this is some real data out there. 51% of time spent online in the US is on mobile devices. I don't know if this is a correct study. I didn't do the study, but I believe them. I don't, I don't see why someone would take the time to lie about this. Certain studies I believe. I believe a lot of people spend time on their phones. And I can see it, I see it a lot. During lunchtime, I see a lot of people on their phones. Not just you guys, you guys walk around here, look at just people who work at the coffee shop or whatever. Everyone's pulling out their phone looking at something. So just know that the vast majority of times in 2019 and probably for the near future, people are going to be working, looking at your website on their phone. Um, there are many reasons. Just know that a, a big one of it, right? Oh yeah, more than half of all videos are from mobile phones too. So even YouTube, a lot of people are looking at YouTube on their phone. I know I do that all the time, to be honest with you. Okay, and lastly, just know that CPCs cost less, or cost, cost per clicks. Cost per clicks, this is something, a marketing term, okay? Getting people to click buttons on a phone is a lot easier, so basically, long story short, it's, uh, you know, it's just something we think about, and people like doing this. Anyway, I hope you guys believe me. Phones are here, they're not going anywhere. Yeah. Okay, enough of data. Data's important. But let's get back to the point. People are on their phones. What the fuck does that matter to us? What it matters is as website designers and developers, when we create a website, 
when people come to our website, we want them to be able to use it. We want them to be able to see all the buttons, the navigation, etc. Right? Bootstrap is the world's most popular CSS framework. What does that mean? It means that Bootstrap is an open source project. There are tens of thousands of people across the world working on this. There have been almost 70,000 people that have contributed to this project. If you can make a contribution to Bootstrap, you can put your code in front of 70,000 developers and then they all say, this is good code and they merge it into their master branch, you guys will be a qualified developer. You can see that there are many branches. Blah, 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 just uh, count, countless branches. You can see that this work on this project has been going on for years and it's going on today. 23 hours, someone just made, wrote some code to make Bootstrap work better for us. Okay, this is actively going on. People aren't quitting on this. And how long ago did this start? Fuck, how do I see the first recruit? Bootstrap has been around for a long time. Is there a way to look at the first one? Hmm. Whatever, man. Just know that people are constantly working on this, okay? It is a CSS framework. Actually, specifically, I'm gonna show you one file, okay? I'm gonna show you one file, I forgot about this. When we say it's a framework, just know that um, that CSS, or that Bootstrap, is just one gigantic CSS file. Someone wrote a bunch of CSS, file, or CSS for us already. Think of it that way. What does this look like? This is CSS, but specifically this is advanced CSS. If you guys want, I, I don't want you guys to try to not use Bootstrap from now on. Use it because these people are pro. I, I don't write better code than them. You can give me 10 years, I don't think I can write better CSS than this. If you guys look through this, you're gonna see that this file is how many lines long? Really long. I don't know how long it is to be honest with you. I would say it's probably like 20,000 lines maybe, close, something like that. Can I not go down? Why can't I? <coughs> what the fuck? Why can't I click that? I'm still scrolling, guys. Give me a second. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to figure out how many lines are in this. Say again. I guess I could have cloned it. I don't know. There's a bunch of ways. I, I just got lazy. I was trying to be funny, you know, scrolling right there. What I'm trying to say is this is a bunch of free CSS. That's all Bootstrap is, a bunch of free CSS. Someone put it on the internet. Someone a long time ago was trying to prove to the world that they know how to write CSS. And they said, guess what? Here's some code I got for you. Download it and add it to your project and your code is gonna look beautiful. Okay? And I'm gonna demo this next, in just a couple minutes whenever we're done with our presentation. Um, CSS is a open source project. It has code written from 70,000 developers across the world over the last like seven years or something, seven to eight years. Bootstrap is only one project like this. There are many, many other projects of free code. Okay? Um, it was originally built by Twitter. It's kind of a random thing. You guys might wanna know. It's made to do responsive designs. It also has sensible defaults. By default, they give you certain colors. By default, they give you certain padding, certain margin, etc. So it looks beautiful. They also choose a correct font, a better font. And also one of the most important things, I guess you could say, is that it's well documented, right? All the, you guys look at this website right here. I want you guys to all open this up. Go ahead and open it up right now because you're gonna be looking at this in just a few minutes after I'm done presenting. Click around. There are two very important things I want you guys to see here. Components and layout. These are the two that you got, these are the two folders that are files that you guys are gonna be looking at for a while, okay? Until you guys master this and can do things off the top of your head. Um, yeah, I'm gonna talk through this uh, in just a moment. Some of you have already looked at this. Okay, so uh, a big thing about the grid in Bootstrap is it's composed of rows and documents, rows and docu uh, rows and columns. My bad, rows and columns. Okay, um, it's hard to. It seems very abstract. It's hard to imagine what is a row, what is a column. Just think about that as being a box. Okay, that we looked at yesterday, and a box can have many boxes inside of it. That's simple. Not re nothing really complicated about this. 
Uh, what's important to think about also is that it's composed of a number 12. The number 12 is used because it's easily divisible and composable into smaller sections. 12 can be made of two sixes, 12 can be made of three fours, 12 can be made of four threes. And like, I, I don't know, like maybe I don't, I, I'm not qualified to be teaching you guys, but I'm not 100% sure why that is so great exactly. But I do know paper, newspapers and magazines follow this concept. Okay, this is how printed documents started off. And that's why when, we, when people came out with user interfaces and computer screens, they said, you know what? People who write newspapers and magazines, they think this is a good layout system. Let's follow along with the, what they did. So that's why we have a grid now. Okay, so we're gonna talk about some key components. You guys heard me say this before. Key components, components you're gonna be using often. The card component. It's gonna have an image, it's gonna have a header, it's gonna have some text, and a button. I'm actually gonna just go ahead and Hey, a card. Know that there are many different types of cards, right? Here's a card right here. Here's an image, a title, some text, a button. What if you want to have a card that was very small and just had text, right? That, those things exist too. Not every single card has a photo, right? Um, this is a list group. There's many different types of components. Just put it that way. This is called a jumbotron. Some of you guys asked me about this yesterday. This jumbotron is also common. Lastly, we talk about forms. I see it's abstract. A form is a place where you enter, enter your email, your password, your username, your phone number, your gender, anything a user can enter. How many, who here has ever filled out a form online before? We've all done it, right? For signing up for this class, we filled out a form. Email, password, we had to check some boxes. We had to do, we had to do a selection a select box, right? There's many different types of forms, and uh, you guys are gonna learn how to use some of these, okay? Look at these documents, look, look at these examples. Here's a form, it has an email, has a password. Notice how when I click it, it changes colors. Here's the code that will do that for you. Oops, did it too much. Anyway, this is just, these are very simple examples, okay? There's, a, there's one that we can upload a file. That's a different type of form. There are many different types of forms. These are some more components. Drop down buttons, carousels, modals, progress indicators. That little spinner thing that spins, it says, hey, I'm thinking. I'm thinking, wait, don't click me, don't click again. I'm thinking right now. That isn't black magic either. Just like yesterday, that navigation didn't come out of nowhere, we had to write code for it. The spinner is also something we're gonna write code to do. We can't. Okay, so certain components that you guys, certain components you're gonna to need to know how to use JavaScript to use correctly. So certain components you guys aren't gonna be able to use yet until you learn JavaScript. But don't worry, it's not gonna be that long from now. We're gonna be learning JavaScript next week, okay? And the week after that, we're gonna be learning a little bit more JavaScript. And then after that, we're gonna, we're gonna, you're gonna be prepared to use some of the more advanced components. So yeah, certain things you guys can't use yet. Don't, don't expect to be able to copy and paste all the components and use them. All right, so that's the slide. Um, I'm gonna open this. Okay, so this is our lab for today, guys. We're gonna build a responsive page, pricing page with Bootstrap, okay? See this form right here? We can see a nav bar, some links, a, head, a jumbotron, three cards, and a nav bar down here, or uh, a footer, okay? You guys got an idea of what we're building? See, you guys, see, you guys all have this open on your computers? It's the lab, it's right here, lab build a responsive pricing page with Bootstrap, day three, okay? Look at this GIF right here. Notice how whenever we slide the screen that the cards, the, although there are three of them in a row, they, they move horizontal uh, to become vertically aligned, okay? All right, so let's do it. We're not gonna do any magic, okay? I want to create a new website. What are some things I need to do? I need to create a folder to put my index. So we're gonna say this is a pricing page. 
I'm gonna make a directory. And then, hold on, hold on. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you guys. I know that this is actually kind of confusing. You know, I get that because I've been there with you guys. Uh, let's look at our desktop, okay? Okay, so what what do we want to call this project? I'm gonna say pricing, okay? Pricing page. Is that an acceptable name? We're building a pricing page. Blah blah blah. We can sell. We sell anything. We sell code school courses. I don't know. What else? What's the other things people sell online? Cars, real estate, etc. It's gonna be the same concept, okay? So if we look at my desktop, look right here. I'm on my desktop. Where am I on my command line? Okay. So do we have anything here called pricing page? I see presentation, <coughs> React Native. Nothing other than presentation that begins with a P. So I'm gonna create a new folder called pricing page. I hit enter. Look what we got right here. So we, we, we can just confirm that we can create a folder using the command line, right? MKDIR, it's called make directory. If you're on Windows, it's gonna be um, DIR. DIR, I think it's this. Just Google make a new folder Windows. I don't know if you're, not, if you're on Windows, okay? So now I'm going to move into this, 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 repos this project, okay? I'm gonna move into it. How many files am I gonna have inside of this folder? Uh, the and the How many do I have in it right now? Because uh, I just made it, right? So once again, this isn't black magic. We're gonna create a new file called index.html. Okay? I create a file called index.html. Now I'm gonna open up my code editor. And I'm gonna see exactly one file here. Okay? And now you guys are gonna see right here at the bottom Oops. At the bottom, we don't have anything like of any branch or anything. The reason why this is, is because we haven't told the computer that this is a GitHub project yet. This isn't a actual website. Well, really it's just a code base. The real word I should use here is code base, right? So I need to initialize. I need to tell the computer like, hey, this is a Git project. And when, it, when I do that, it's going to do a couple things for me. It's gonna set up a branch. It's gonna create a, free, a folder for me. It's gonna do a couple of little things, but that's going to prepare us to share the code in the future. Okay, so how can we do this? Now that I'm inside of this directory, I can run a can command called git init. This is going to initialize this folder as a new project. So I run git init, I hit enter, and it quite literally says initialize an empty git repository. Right? And you see that it also made a dot git for me. You guys cannot see this on the left. Do you guys see right here there's a file called dot git? <coughs> we don't see this because this is what we call a system file. This file is used by the system. You as a user sh should never touch this file. But you as a programmer can touch this file. Okay? So if I open up my finder and I open up pricing page, I can see this because I've set up my computer to allow me to touch these files because I'm a professional software developer. I need to do that sometimes. But the default set setting the default setting is that any file that begins with dot is hidden. I think mostly if you open up if you did the same steps as I did right now, you would only see an index.html after running git in there because you have not set up your computer as basically a software developer. And don't worry, I'm not hating, I'm just saying that like, you just gotta configure it. And that any file that starts with dot is a special file. Okay, it's a special file. So anyway, just know when we ran this git init, the special folder was created. This is going to help us manage our code. All right, enough lecturing, let's get coding. So I've gone ahead and opened up our default template. Every single file, Every single website is going to have this somewhere. I'm gonna paste this into index.html. I'm going to create a new folder that corresponds to this styles right here, okay? I wanna change the path, change the path. Say CSS because it's in CSS. And let's just say, uh, I wanna create a new folder. I'm gonna say hello.css. Could I get this to work? Why not? What could I do to make this work? What can I change on the left to make this work? One. 
Exactly. Thank you. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Just know that on line 11, we're saying, hey, I need this file. Okay? And remember how a second ago I, guys, I showed you guys that uh, Bootstrap is just one long ass CSS file? We're going to do the exact same thing now. We're going to say, hey, I need this file. Why can't I copy this? Motherfucker. Whatever. We got Bootstrap. We got documentation on Bootstrap. We got this. Okay, here it is right here. We go to Bootstrap 4.3, getting started introduction. Okay, you scroll down right here. And they provide you the link right here. You can just click this button. You click it. You save it. Or you paste it in here, okay? So, I kind of got, got, got ahead of ourselves. I'm gonna comment this out, okay? I'm gonna show you what Bootstrap does. Hello world. Oh, no, no, pricing page. Here's, here's some text. Okay, now get us what we're gonna do. We're gonna see what we've done so far. Okay, put a pricing page, we'll put some text. Okay, so what can we do now? I'm going to uncomment this line. Sorry guys, I know sometimes I should show you both screens, okay? So pay attention to what happens to the style here. Okay, I'm gonna save, I'm gonna refresh. You guys see what happened right there? I didn't change it, Bootstrap changed it. Bootstrap has the, the fonts already. Someone said this font is the prettiest font in the world. They chose it. 80,000 people agreed with them. They're like, all right, I think this is the best font, okay? It did some other sensible defaults. Just know that it's gonna give us a bunch of magical stuff for free. That's what Bootstrap is doing for us. Now we are getting in the point of magical code, okay? But it wasn't that magical. On line 11, we imported our own style. On line 12, we imported some style from somewhere else. 70,000 people put their heads together and did this for us. We want to leverage those people's skills. Okay. No, if mine's is on top, it means that if my CSS and bootstraps were conflicting, bootstrap would overwrite mine. So this is actually, thank you for pointing that out. I just switched it, just like you said. Anything that you import from the internet should go above what you write yourself. Because you want to get their basic, and then sometimes you're going to want to customize certain things that other people do. Bootstrap always has a green button. We want our button to be light green. That's how this is going to work. Okay, so let's go ahead and prove this one more time, okay? I'm gonna leave this right here. Button. Hello. Uh, UL. Hi. Save it. Comments out, save it. Refresh. Looks like shit, right? Looks like shit. So we're gonna uncomment this now. Save it. Refresh. Still looks like shit. <laughs> but it will look better given a couple of different steps, a couple of additional steps that we need, okay? So I'm going to delete all this right here because I'm going to now show you guys how to be a professional developer. And it's going to involve copy-driven development. Oops, hold on, let me fix this. Okay, copy-driven development. What is this, what is this thing that the Lord keeps talking about? Okay, so the pricing page. What does it have at the very top, guys? A nav bar, thank you. I'm gonna go to the bootstrap. I'm going to find a nav bar, okay? I'm gonna scroll. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna find an example. This one seems okay. I don't know. Um, this one seems okay. That one seems okay. All these look beautiful. Except I want this one right here, okay? This black one. So guess what I'm gonna do? Copy. I'm gonna copy this bad boy. I'm gonna paste it. We're gonna hop over here and we're gonna refresh. And we can see that we have it. But what's the problem? It's empty. You cannot just copy without thinking, okay? It takes some thinking. That's what programming is, you gotta do some thinking. I didn't even read this. This is 
There's a comment here. They're saying that you need to put other shit in here, bro. Okay? So I'm going to hop over here. Okay, we got the a dark one. You know, that seems legit. So I'm going to look over here. And then I'm just going to copy everything inside of here. Okay, paste this here. Save. Where did you paste this? Between what we had right here, which says navbar content. This is the outside. This is what? This is what called what? What did we talk about yesterday? This container is exactly what it's called. I'm going to paste what we got. And we go over here and we refresh. And now we see you have a beautiful nav bar. It sizes correctly. I can't click a button because it's a JavaScript, okay? Uh, just know that like in a couple weeks, you're going to know how to do this. Actually, there's a way to do this, though. I actually like this one more, guys. I'm sorry. I changed my mind. I like this one more. So I'm going to paste all this in here, save it, refresh. What's going on here? This should be text. What the fuck? Hmm. One second, guys. We got a, uh, we got a problem, Houston. I should be seeing some stuff here. Am I in the right place? Hmm. Oh, it's collapsed. That's why. My bad, my bad, my bad. Sorry, guys. Okay, my bad. Hmm. What the f... Let me try this one more time. Okay, so this happens a lot. I've done this before in my life. Price, uh, copy-driven development can go wrong sometimes, okay? So it's okay to throw away all the code that we just copied. That doesn't, that, that doesn't make us bad. And also, if you, if you chose a really complicated one and it stops working, just go back to the more basic one, okay? Get that one working first and then uh, work yourself forward, okay? I've tried to solve too many problems at once. Okay, so we got a nav bar. We could change home, features, pricing, disable, etc. And let's just do that real quick, okay? I forgot what these say up here. Uh, what does it say up top? Our classes, recent projects about. So we'll say uh, our classes, uh, recent prices, and about. Okay, we'll save it. Hop over here to our uh, project. We're gonna see these change, right? Okay, so um, so now we can enter an additional class here. Pool right? Please work. Okay, I forgot how to do this. To be honest with you. Mm. Okay, so now we're gonna. This is how I really write software, guys. I'm about to Google like crazy. Bootstrap, nav, bar, pool, right. Some of these things you guys have to memorize. I don't know any other situ situation. Sometimes it's called pool, right. And you're gonna look at other examples, okay? Here it is, this right here. So I'm copy this, paste this here. I hope this works. Uh, this documentation is out of date, guys. Why is this working? Because this, this, this thing was originally written five years ago. This answer on Stack Overflow is five years old. Remember how I showed you a second ago that Bootstrap is worked on every day? 23 hours ago, someone made a commit. So this is a, this is a, part, of, a part of your life now, that like, you're gonna look for examples of code and the code isn't going to work because it's an old version of the code, okay? So now we're gonna, just gonna look at the documentation pool, right? Okay, here it is, here it is. Justify content, I forgot, okay? So now we go, we can just copy this one. Where do you guys think this is gonna go? Damn it, we got a fucking problem. Mm. I'm just gonna copy this one. Oh, okay, I, I, did, I did it wrong, that's why. Copy here. Because I pasted this in the wrong place. 
So these, what is this right here, guys? What's line 18 saying? This is a bunch of classes. And these classes are what? They're going to be used by that big CSS style sheet that we looked at, that we imported, right? So it's gonna give us a, a bunch of free magical um, styling. So when I looked at this example, what I did wrong was this. I did not read it thoroughly. That's the truth, I didn't read it thoroughly. I copied justify content center and I tried to paste it right here on line 18. What's the difference between this line and this line right here? <clears throat> exactly. This style is applicable to a UL. You can simply look at the example and see that. So I was not careful. I did it wrong. That's why I did not get the results that I wanted. Just know as software developers, if something is not going right, you probably made a mistake. What are you reading? Unordered list. An unordered list. You know, like something that, like, uh, grocery list, you know, does that, does that necessarily have to be ordered? You know, so I'm going to save it now and let's look at and see. Hopefully this will work. What the fuck? Hmm. Ah, God damn it. Justify content. Hold on, let me try one more thing. Okay. Uh, style is, um, uh, Align, self, flex, and come on, please work. Fuck. Hmm. Well, this isn't going so great. Uh, give me one second. I'm just going to copy the whole example now. I'm just going to see one that's moved to the right. Damn, there's so many examples here. They'll automatically be assigned to the right. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna do this one right now. If I can't figure this out now, we're gonna move forward because I want you guys to, there's a bunch of other stuff we gotta do. And this is constantly being updated. You know, I, like, I don't know what to say. There's constantly being updated. Maybe it's changed since the last time I remember using it. I remember last time you could type in a class called pool right. It's been a little while since I've done web apps. Uh, I've mainly built mobile apps. So anyway, just to long story short, we got an acceptable nav bar. I guarantee you every single one of you can change this, okay? All right, so nav bar is simply one of the components, right? Uh, now we need to what? The lab, what are we doing again? We're showing a, um, now we need a jumbotron, okay? So let's look it over at our components. Jumbotron, okay? I'm gonna look at these jumbotrons. I kinda like this one. We'll copy that one. We'll paste it down here. Okay, we'll refresh. And now we see that we have a Jumbotron. You guys can all add a background image to this, I think. Right? I think I think all you guys have done that. Who, you guys all did that yesterday, right? The yeah, so do I need to show you guys how to do that? No, right? Do you want me to? So, okay, fine. So we have a class called Jumbotron right here, right? How can we change something in CSS? The dot we need to select it. We need to select what we want to change. How can we select something based on its class? Uh, dot yes. Let me do background. Background image. URL. Something like that, right? Background, image, URL. Something this simple, I still Google, guys. Okay, I like looking at examples, and I want you guys to do the same thing. Okay, so let's just say a uh, beautiful image, okay? So I see the example. I kind of like this hummingbird. Uh, I kind of like this one more. So we're gonna open this in a new tab. We're gonna open this in a new tab. Open in a new tab. I'm gonna jack this URL right here. I'm gonna paste it here. And I hope this will work. And that did in fact work. Okay? So this is uh, just a, just know that like when you guys make beautiful websites, the vast majority of the times you're not gonna be using background images or like really bright colors. It kinda sort of depends. Right now it doesn't look good until we fix a lot of other things, okay? 
I'm just showing you that this can be done very easily. You guys can use bootstrap components and customize them with very little, with very little effort. Okay. So, um, what else do we need to build? I forgot cards. Was it cards next? A form next. Okay. Um, okay. So let's look at the website one time. Okay, guys, notice how this thing resizes correctly. That's the really important thing right here. If you guys wrote CSS, look how these, these things disappear. These, these links on the, dis, uh, the left disappear, and this thing goes away too, as I'm sliding. Ah, they disappeared. Right now, we can't click it, because once again, we don't have JavaScript. But know that like very soon, you guys can click that button, and it'll drop down and allow you to click other shit. Okay? So here we are. I'm not going to change it, okay? I want you guys thinking more than listening. So we got a Jumbotron. We got, uh, now we need to have some cards, okay? So I'm gonna copy a card over from Bootstrap. I'm going to paste this below what we have so far. Save it, and we refresh. And now we have a card. This image is broken, so we're just gonna go ahead and put in the image. Free uh, card, beautiful image. I'm going to replace this URL because I want something beautiful there. That looks beautiful. Okay, we're going to paste this. Okay, what, okay what, 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 what would you like to see? So how did we build this card right here? I went to Bootstrap. I already, I looked on the left here for a component that I want called a card. I clicked it. I scrolled down a little bit. I saw an example of a card that I liked. And below this example, there was the code. So I clicked this button here. And now I have the code. So I jump back over to our code editor and I can paste it. It but it's in the body. Yes. It, all, your, all your HTML is going to be inside the body. Yeah. So I pasted it. Right? You with me? Yeah. So I save it. How many cards should I see now, guys? One. So if I refresh, I see two cards. But this is kind of weird, right? Shouldn't this card go from left to right instead of from top to bottom? Have we, have we had a situation in which items went from top to bottom, but we wanted it to go left to right? So, make a main container that inside there's three cards, then you have a the right here. I'm going to do that. And that is a great idea. Thank you. That is a great fucking idea. So I'm going to do that. We're going to, we're going to wrap. We're going to wrap what we have so far inside of its own container. Do you guys see what line 50 and 70 is doing? We're wrapping a container. We're, wrap, we're creating a container which is going to wrap our cards. Nothing magical. So 49 through 70, we're wrapping the cards. Lines 50 through 73, this div right here and this div right here is responsible for wrapping our cards. Okay? We got beginning div. We've got a closing div. It's going to wrap them. It's going to say, hey, I'm going to hold all these cards inside of it. I'm going to prove this to you guys. I'm going to give it a class. I'm going to say uh, uh, card wrapper. Okay? Guess what I'm about to do right now, guys? No, I want to make sure that I target it correctly first. So let's give it a background color. A pink. I want each and every one of you guys to do this. Every single time you think you're targeting it right from this and that first, make sure you're changing the color. Start very simple. Everyone here knows what the color pink is. You guys cannot be confused whether or not you guys are tar correctly targeting it. So if I say this, I expect there to be some pink here. And I in fact see some pink. So I can see and I have proof of concept that we successfully targeted 
this container. So, what was the initial problem? Exactly, that's the initial problem. We don't want, our product owner, our CEO, the person who's paying our check said that they want it going left to right, not top to bottom. Because, yeah, this looks beautiful, but why are we wasting all this space? Why are we making our users scroll when there's just nothing here? Right? So, now we're going to use the knowledge of Flexbox that we have to get that behavior. Say display flex, Let's say flex direction, is row. We save it, we refresh it, and we can see that that, that, that that did in fact work. But these are kind of, that's interesting. Hmm. Okay, I did something wrong here. Yeah, exactly, I did, it. yeah. So I'm just going to, because I just copied this code and I didn't do anything special, I'm just gonna delete all this stuff that I did previously and paste in another one. This is the purpose of copy-driven development. You don't get scared that you can delete this precious code that you wrote. I could delete this whole file and do it again in five minutes, no problem, okay? I want you guys to be copying and pasting for a while and then, and then, and then fill, it in, in, fill it in. Just get it going, get it where you need it to be first, okay? So let's go ahead and save it, we'll refresh, and we see we have one card, right? So I'm going to select everything that is this card, all this HTML and CSS. I'm gonna hold Shift, Option, or I'm gonna press down one time. I think I did it twice. Okay, I did it once. Now, I'm sorry. Let's try this again. Option, shift, and down one time. Guess what I just did? It copies all the code that's highlighted and it puts it right below. Guess how many cards I'm gonna have right now if I refresh? Two. Exactly. How many do. Option, uh, option shift down. It might be alt shift down for you. Okay. Yeah. Guys, you guys write that down as wasted. Just, just, just open up your code editor and do it one or two times until you get that muscle memory. Okay? Okay, so we have three cards. We refresh. We got it. Now we have another problem, guys. The cards are going left to right, but they're too fucking close. Thank you. Okay? What can we do now? Where should I put, where should I, where, where should I put space between over here on the left? Uh, no, just define content, space, around. Okay, I don't know which one it is. I, I swear to God, I don't know which one it is. So what am I gonna do? Try. I'm just gonna try it out. I'm just gonna type it and see what happens. Okay, type it, save it. Okay, that looks good. That seems all right. Okay, so now we have another problem. What's going on right here? I don't like it. Okay, so like, like this is more subjective here, right? I, I, like, this, there's no right or wrong here per se. But know that your container, whatever is inside of your container, should not be hugging the end of the container. That's not. There, there should be some appropriate spacing. So this, I forgot what I called it. Card wrapper. What do I want to add to add more space inside of this wrapper? Yes, padding. Padding. Good job, Sean. I'm gonna say padding top. Twenty pixels. Honestly, I should not be using pixels. Some of you have been, been really impressive, okay? I've seen some of you guys using REM. There's REM, there's VH, there's percentage. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways. REM is the best way, actually. So I'm gonna do two REM, see what happens. Okay, so we got some spacing. But now, I realize I want some spacing at the bottom, too. So I'm just gonna copy this code and change it to some padding bottom. Okay, so we got some reasonable padding. It looks decent. You guys can all change the paint. I don't want to do this. I'm going to be really frustrated if you guys can't figure out how to do this. Okay? It's right here. There's one line. Very simple. Okay, so let's move forward. Um, where did that form go? So this is him demonstrating the responsiveness. Uh, Etc. I thought there was a form here. Am I wrong? Is it somewhere else? Where did this form come from? Whatever. It doesn't matter. <coughs> it doesn't matter where the form is or how you get it on the screen or how the user gets to it. 
The point is, is that you guys know how to, you need to know how to build forms. You need to, have to know how to build all types of forms. You just need to be able to click their age. And that clicking button, it should only have numbers in it. And then that form, if they, if they say it's an email, there better be an app. And there be, better be a .com or .net or .something. Okay, and that's what forms are going to do for us. So guess what I'm going to do now? I'm going to open up the Bootstrap documentation. I'm going to look on the left for a specific component, a form component. I'm going to look at examples and then find one that we think is appropriate. It's a really complicated one here. This one right here, okay? This is actually one of the most advanced ones, to be honest with you, there's a lot going on here. There's a bunch of different types of inputs, right? I'm gonna copy it just to show you guys, this is, this is how, this is arguably how easy software development can be if you guys get good enough at it. We paste it, we jump over here, we refresh. If I scroll down, what am I gonna see? Bam. What's the problem with the form, guys? It's too big, right? Yeah, how long, whose email is this long? Whose email needs 80 characters? How many, how many characters can go in here? I'm thinking this is like 90 characters. Listen, count string length. That was 68 characters long. No one has an email that long. So what can we do to make this form smaller? Uh, we can do padding. We could also do a lot of things, okay? But specifically, I'm gonna now, now we're gonna pivot now into using uh, rows and columns, okay? So now there's this concept called uh, rows inside of, um, inside of uh, Bootstrap. And guess what, they, what, guess what the container is called? Container. Yeah. So we're gonna paste this bad boy here. And I'm going to give it an additional class just so that we can see it. Okay, I'm gonna say uh, class dash demo. Okay, paste this over here. Say background color, background color is light green. Okay, let me say minimum height is, I don't know, 500 pixels, okay? So if we now jump back over to our uh, code edit, uh, to our browser and we refresh, do not save here. We can see this, right? So remember how I was talking about how we, we, we constantly want to have boxes inside of boxes inside of boxes? So imagine, imagine if, um, if we wanted to have two boxes inside of here and one would have some text and the other one would have the form. So now we introduce the concept of columns. So we can look at our examples here we just keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Oh, this is not the one. My bad, grid. Now we can introduce these columns, okay? So we have one column. And actually, we just want uh, column one, column one. Someone give me a color. Green. Green. Someone give me another color. Okay, oh, I did this wrong actually, fuck. You guys, come on man, you guys gotta help me out here. Okay, so we got green, we got orange, what else? Red. Okay, so we've got, uh, I need to change this color right here, so this is more clear. Okay, so we've got a c container. It holds one column inside of it. Uh, I just did this to to like because I want to, you guys to be able to see. Oh yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Nice. Okay, we save it. We refresh. We can see that we have one column here. And notice that the column takes up the entire width because of why, guys. Because there's only one column. It's by default going to take up the entire width. So imagine I did this. I had two other columns. Guess how it's going to behave. What's going to happen to this green column? One third, yeah. Exactly, it's going to be smaller and it's going to take one third. So let's refresh. Oh, 
My bad, I need to just container. Uh, pips. My bad, I need to do one more thing. My bad, I fucked up. Columns go inside the rows. I'm sorry, I fuck, I've missed that state, step, okay? So, all your columns should be wrapped in one row. Or, um, all, everything should be wrapped in one row. And inside of the rows from left to right, we'll add columns. And inside of our columns, we can additionally add additional rows. Right? Does that make sense? Hold on, let me do one more thing, okay? Class demo, let's give it a padding. Padding of, uh, fit, you know. I'm sorry, guys. If I if I if I if I confuse you guys, please let me know. I I know that I kind of confused myself right there. Are you guys with me? Why? You guys with me? What are you trying to do? <laughs> I'm trying. We're trying to di divide up the space of our screen into consistent ways so it's easier to understand. Right now, it's just a bunch of colorful boxes, but you can imagine the shit. Exactly. We're gonna put a form in there in just a second. Okay. So we're saving. We're saving. Refresh. And we can see that inside this blue row, right? This is a row from left to right. Inside of this row, we have three columns, okay? Guess how many columns we could have? 12. Yeah, we could have 12 columns. We could have eight, we have one column be eight spaces long. We have one, two columns be six spaces long. What it boils down to is they all need to add up to be 12. That's how it's going to work, okay? So anyway, that being said, imagine, that, we're getting paid money. Okay, we want this to be the entire width. Uh, okay, let's fix out. I don't know what's going on here. Which? Say again? You want me to put this inside of another one? I knew I should have done that. Okay, this is probably the best way, guys. I'm so sorry, okay? You guys forgive me, man. I swear, I, I really try to write the best code I can for you, but sometimes I make mistakes, okay? Let's refresh. Okay, that seems like it worked correctly, okay? This is actually the correct way because like, you never ever want stuff hugging the right and left. Let's look at Facebook as an example, okay? It's the structure. I'm not really sure why, but it, the container should hold a row inside of it. Okay. Wait, so now what you did for an issue, uh, did you, can you go back to Facebook? Okay. So you did class row? Yes. You just added her here. So, so just put, put, think of it this way, okay? Think of it this way. We have to have a div that has a class container, yeah. right? And inside of that, we need to have a div with a class of row. And inside of this, we can have the columns. Okay. Yeah. Just look at this. Just look at this illustration right here. And so, this is a blue row. We have columns, right? So let's do one more thing. Actually, let's go ahead and mix this width uh, height one hundred percent. Can I say this? God damn it. Yes? Is it possible for you to extend your screen? Like extend it to the wall or something? What do you mean extend it to the wall right now? So for example, like I would, it would be easier to see uh, uh, the website like yeah. in front of the page and the code next to each other. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Hold on. Sometimes I keep doing this wrong. I'm getting all over the place. Right here. Can you go back to the code? Okay, so here, container is that blue thing, right? Correct. And then now you put the row within that blue thing, the padding. Yep. Actually, we don't even need the container, but you will normally do that. Okay. Uh, the reason why I did the container is because almost always you're going to put it inside of a container because you don't want it to be next to everything. Notice how a second ago, when we had a container, that the spacing right here, right? It's always going to be in a container. You don't ever want stuff hugging the outside. Okay? Everything is going to be in a container. Correct. 
the jumbotron is one exception because you can't have an image from left to right. I would say all the way, yeah. There's a couple exceptions. Guys, anything I say, there's, there's always gonna be an edge case. Okay, an edge case means that like 99.99% .99 of the time, Lloyd is right. But this is one situation where what Lloyd just said is completely wrong. Okay, that's what an edge case is. This is a very important word in programming, edge case. So, that being said, come on, we're, we're taking a while. Like, so right now we have two different, uh, col three different columns inside of this row. That seems reasonable, right? To show you, we could have four. Exactly. So now we can say row two, save it, say row two, background. Hey, give me color, Sean. Oops, save, save. Row two, background color is black. Hmm. This is interesting. Margin, top. 100 pixels. Why is this? Can you just, um, can you go back to the HTML? Is this the class of the, the column to the second row? Do you have column, column one, two, three? And then in the CSS, So this right here is one row, right? Yeah. What's the background color? Oh, my bad, my bad, because the container is blue. Okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. Okay, let's do this right here. My bad. Sorry, guys. It's hard coding live, man. It really is. It's quite tricky. So I'm save here. I'm gonna copy over here. Oops. Okay, so we'll say that our first row is going to have what color? Yellow. And second one's gonna be black. Now we need to give it padding now. There it is. The reason why is these containers are taking up the whole row. It's, it's filled up the whole row. Let's do this to be more explicit. Okay, so we had a blue container. This blue container held two rows. Each one of these rows has some columns in it. Additionally, we can add some rows inside of these containers. And watch, we're about to do that. So actually, no, 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 just do this very simple real quick. The first one is going to have, I know what to do, I know what to do. Oh, I got a great idea. The first one is going to have um, one column. one big ass column. The second one is going to have uh, two columns. One big column, two smaller columns. Guess how many columns I want this one to have? Three. One, two, three, four. Three. So we got one column inside this row. We've got two columns inside the second uh, row. We've got three columns inside of the fourth row. So now, how the fuck is this useful? Lloyd, you keep talking about this stuff. What does this mean to me? Now we're going to make something useful with this. We're going to create a new div. Guess what class this is going to be? row. We're going to create one more row. Okay. Now we're going to add two columns. Wait, you have row, row, other row. So now this one is just row, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just row. row, one, row, two, row. Th that is to apply some colors so that you can see it. So refresh now, you don't see it yet because I haven't applied any additional styles. So we're gonna say row with form, okay? Row with form. 
The purpose of writing these custom styles is just so that we can see it. So you guys can visually imagine what's going on. Yeah, and then the second, you're gonna delete these colors. Okay, and they're just gonna be there. Right now, does Bootstrap tell you how many co columns we have? Did they tell us? No, they just use it to lay out stuff. They say, hey, this is one big column I want in the middle. And on the right of that, I want a smaller column. Okay? And, and, like, and like right here, what if I wanted this column right here to take up th more space than this orange one? You could easily do that. That's what the objective is here. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's, get, let's, stay, let's stay on focus, okay? Let's stay a little bit focused here. I, I get complaints about, I, I sometimes try to do a little bit of everything. That's not good. Okay, so I'm gonna say height is you know, 500 pixels. I'm gonna say uh, background color is pink. Please work. I refresh. I save over here. I refresh. And we see we have one more row. Seems about right. So now we have two columns in here. Say uh, special column one. Um, and once again, we're just doing a background color to prove and a height just to, so you guys can see it, okay? When we say this one is going to be, um, I don't know, uh, lavender. And what's another color? I don't know that many colors, I think. White? White? All right. So, just save. Save. Okay, this is the same. Say again? Hey man, I love shapes. I love geometry. <laughs> okay, so notice how that this container is taking up one, one, you know, like one half, one half. Now, what if I wanted this container right here to be bigger? Flex. Flex is how we lay it out. Side grid is how we make it bigger. But I'm happy you threw out a keyword. Okay, my. Okay. Good. Seven. Yeah, something like that. I don't remember exactly. So it needs to add up to be right here. This is the one we're looking for. This is an example. So column dash md dash six. So we're gonna look at the example we have here. We're gonna say column dot uh, column dot slash md slash eight. And I know this seems like crazy things. You guys are gonna need to practice. I know this means column middle medium. If the, if, the, if the screen is medium, I want this column to be. What is eight, what does eight out of twelve mean? Two thirds. Two thirds of the screen's width. Thank you. Everyone <laughs> saving me right there. Because eight out of twelve. Is twelve the maximum? Yes. Well, how do we know We just talked about that. Do you remember I was talking about the twelve? Twelve is a special number. It can be divided many ways. Do you remember the presentation? Sorry, I suck at math. Okay, so if I refresh it, it's okay. Do you see how this is a little bit bigger now? Okay, so now we're gonna let's up the ante. I want this to be eleven. This to be one. Actually, you're probably never ever going to do this. Someone's going to yell at you if you try to do this. Because this is, this is not going to look good. It looks kind of funky, right? And guys, and just know that all this right here is how we're going to create beautiful websites and have them consistent and have them spaced out right and have them even and all types of crazy stuff by combining these patterns that we've seen here, okay? And then in the future, we're going to delete all the colors. And you guys are not gonna, no one's gonna see the container. They're just going to be there. Okay, they're going to be there and no one's going to see it. Okay, so, uh, okay, last thing, last thing. I have a question about the different styles of the column. Can we use like my sense of about the flex, like this part is flex two and the other one flex one? So one two third, one one third? Yes. There's so many different ways to do it, man. I'm gonna go. Bootstrap is using flex. Okay, so flex would be applicable. Yes. Bootstrap is built on flex. Okay. Could you use Bootstrap instead because it's more responsive to the No, Bootstrap has all the, like it's using Flexbox to do a bunch of stuff for us and it's automatically doing these things for us. So let me show you what I mean. So I haven't shown you this. Do you see these columns right here? So watch what happens when I resize this. Oh shit. Fuck, my bad, I did this wrong. Uh, long story short, just like in the example, I gotta show you, I gotta find another example. When you slide it, the, the rows will switch. Instead of being horizontally, if it gets too small, it'll become vertical. 
Okay, so I don't have a great example right now. Um, you guys can see this in cards in just a second. I'll show you an example actually. Uh, I'll show you this. Uh, you guys are gonna build something just like this by the end of this class. Actually not by the end of this class. Halfway through you guys are gonna build something just like this. And I built this with my class, uh, the previous class. I forgot which one it was, so please forgive me. Okay, this is IMDB clone, right? No, look at the cards as I slide them. They automatically become, uh, you know, horizontal, like follow. I didn't do this one correctly, okay? And this is what I'm trying to tell you, man. I feel like I, I'm pretty good at CSS and I still don't know how to do this 100% correctly. But I'm still more than hireable. And I, I want you guys to be the same way. Fuck me. Okay, I'm sorry, I really want you guys to see this one because this one, I thought I was, I was really impressed with this one. It's a Pokemon uh, Pokedex. Oh, here we are, here we are. So uh, this is an app, you guys are gonna learn how to do this, okay? If you guys can show someone this, you guys, you guys can prove that you know what you're doing, okay? So look at my nav bar. I slide, uh, the nav bar disappears, and I can expand it. Okay, and notice how right now I have rows of three cards, right? As I slide them, it becomes one. And they all roll, they, they all start vertically going. I challenge one of you guys to do this. Try to do this without bootstrap. You will impress the shit out of me if you can do this correctly. I'm telling you, it's that hard. So anyway, I've, I've talked about how hard this was a bunch. I don't wanna talk about that anymore. Um, okay, the original objective. The original objective was our boss came in and said, hey, Loy, we need this form. Or hey, Mai, we need this form. Or hey, Fung, we need this form. We need this form to sit in a row. And we want the form to take up more space than what's on the right of it. On the right of it, we just want to have a beautiful image. And it says something that encourages people to sign up. So, because we have Bootstrap and we know how to copy and paste, we'll just copy the form and we'll paste it inside of this column. We'll save it and we'll check our work. And we see now we have a beautiful form. Amazing. So that's not particularly great because we have a little padding issues here, right? So we're gonna go over here. We're gonna say our special form one. There's a padding of, I don't know, 25 pixels. We save it, we refresh. Okay, we got something halfway decent, right? And now on the right, right here is typically where people will do what? They'll add images. Well, they'll add like um, some text that explains why they should enter their information, why their information, why they should give you their information. And I'm gonna let you guys use your imagination on this one, okay? I'm not gonna put anything in there, but you can put a lot of stuff in there. You can put some text, some images, some images and text. That's a real thing too, okay? You guys look at the default templates, okay? Beautiful WordPress template. I want you guys to constantly be looking at uh, what other people in the world are doing so that you guys can figure out how to make beautiful websites, okay? This is this place called Theme Forest. It's just people that build templates all day. That's all they do. I'm looking at a live demo of one of their, of one of their templates. So we got a, we got a nab, come on. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Whatever, we got a nab bar. We got some images, some stuff going on. I, be, I bet you at the bottom we have a form. Why can't I make this go away? Oh my God, this is ridiculous. Give me a form somewhere. Whatever, you guys, I think you guys believe me when I say that there's, there's forms all over the internet, okay? Please trust me, beautiful. HTML5 template. This one, this guy's beautiful. Dude. I've, I've personally looked this guy before. He's got so many beautiful websites. What do you mean? Why do we buy this stuff? You buy this because like, if you want to write CSS, I can give you a year to write CSS. And I don't think you could write it as beautiful as him. You could, and it'll cost you a year of your time. Okay,
Wait, who? I could. Uh, why are we buying this theme right here? Is your what you're saying? No, I'm saying like if we're buying the code or the themes, like why would people hire you guys to do stuff for them? They could just build the website themselves, right? Oh, so so the. Th Theoretically, that is possible, right? Just like theoretically, I can give you a bootstrap link and say, hey, all you gotta do is copy and paste a little bit here. But do you think you could build this website in 30 minutes? I, I already gave you a link. I guarantee you, you can't. And what I'm trying to say is like, even though you're copy and pasting and you're doing copy driven development, what to copy, where to paste, what to change is actually a very difficult question. So here's a beautiful website right here. I just want, the, the objective of me showing you this website is here's an example of a form. Forms are not just sitting there by themselves. They have some other information that, in, that entices your user to submit their information. Just think of it that way. So I want you guys, when you guys to build this momentarily, give me something here. I don't care what it is, give me something. And make it look beautiful. Choose some colors that look correct. Make it the correct size, okay? Do you have any questions? Okay guys, get, get going.